Did you know you could charge any type of MacBook with any type of Apple charger? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be looking at creative ways of charging your Apple laptop devices. Now I know a lot of my audience has dabbled with these types of computers, and maybe you've got some old ones, maybe you've got some new ones, maybe you've got a mixture of both. And one thing that gets a little annoying is figuring out where the right charger is for the right laptop. I know I've got just a, a bundle of, of uh, chargers, and sometimes I get frustrated trying to grab the right one. Or sometimes I just don't want to travel with more than one. Well, I'm going to show you guys some different solutions that you can use to charge your laptops with different types of chargers. So my test subjects today are going to be a 2015, uh, that's a 11 inch MacBook Air. And I've also got a 2019 uh, MacBook Air. And these both use obviously two different types of connectors. This uses the MagSafe 2 connector and this one uses the USB-C connector. So we've got two different types of charger requirements, but I'm going to show you how you can get it done with one. Now which of these two chargers do we need to charge both laptops? Well really either one. And I'm going to show you how, and I'm going to show you what you need to buy, and they're not that expensive, and I'll have links in the description below of what you need to get this done. So let's get started. So we're going to start off with a scenario of maybe you already owning an older laptop and you get a new one so we're going to be using the older style MagSafe either one or two charger to charge our USB-C laptop and to get that done we're going to need a little dude called the Electjet AnyWatt and this is a as it says right there USB-C power delivery power adapter so this is going to take either a MagSafe one or MagSafe two and I didn't believe that when I first read it but I'm here to tell you it works and it's going to turn that into USB-C. So let me open this up and show you how it works. So here it is. This is all it looks like. This is what was in the package and then a, a very informative instruction sheet that comes with it. And it's got a MagSafe adapter on this side and a USB-C adapter on this side. And it said it could take either a MagSafe 1 or MagSafe 2. So I've got right here to prove that a MagSafe 2 charger and a MagSafe 1 and watch this so that magnets right on there and this one same thing so they've figured out the right size to make both of those work and then it's going to take the power coming from your MagSafe connector and convert it into power delivery for your USB-C type laptop and it doesn't have to be a MacBook Air. It doesn't have to be a MacBook at all. It could be a Nintendo Switch. It could be a phone. It could be a Dell laptop. It doesn't matter. Just USB-C power delivery. So let's go over some of the specs. So the instruction sheet here shows it can take an input of 45, 60, or 87 watts for both MagSafe 1 and MagSafe 2. And I think that's a, a typo because the, the bigger power supply in the old ones was an 85 watt. But I'm going to forgive him for that. And then on the output, it shows of those three different adapters what the power delivery output options are. Now, they're all going to have 5 volts, uh, 3 amps, 9 volts, 3 amps, 12 volts, 15 volts. And then once we get up into the 20 volt range, you can see the, uh, the current changes. Now, if any of this is foreign to you, then I've made a video a couple weeks ago that explained what all these volts and amps and watts are. I will also link that in the description below. So you can have some fun learning about watts and volts and amps. But you can see there that the 20 volt uh, 3 amp on that higher one is going to be a full 60 watts. So depending on which MacBook you're trying to charge or which device you're trying to charge, then you want to make sure you have the right input. In addition to that, it's got a list of compatible products. So it shows you all the different types of MacBooks and MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros and what type of power adapter you may need and how many watts you're going to get out. So like I said, it's very informative. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to know. So don't lose this when you, when you get it. So let's go ahead and get one of these plugged in and let's start charging up our, our new laptop with our old style charger. All right, so I'm starting right here with an 85 watt MagSafe. 
and that's the original MagSafe one. So this would have come from like a 15 or 17 inch MacBook back in the 2009 to 2010, 11 era. So we're just gonna magnet that right onto this dude. And then we're gonna plug that in. And it will show you a green light on here showing that it's charging, but it won't turn amber when it's actually charging versus green. It's just showing you that it's supplying power to the elect jet and it's creating a power delivery out of that. So let me go ahead and open this up and we'll look at the charger settings and I'll show you that it's charging. All right, so right off the bat, we can see that it does have a charging indicator on the battery. And if we click on that, it'll show that it is charging. But let's go ahead and go into about this Mac and then system report and then we'll go to the power tab and that's going to show down at the bottom what type of AC charger you have hooked up. Now it shows that it, yes there is one connected and it shows that it's 60 watts which matches what our instruction sheet said for the higher output uh, in this case 85 watt adapter that it's able to create 20 volts at 3 amps and create that 60 watts of power. So this is a pretty nifty little device that depending on what style or how big your MacBook is, um, you, can, you can keep it charged. Now obviously, if you've got one of the huge 16 inch or 15 inch uh, newer models that uses a USB-C that needed an 87 watt adapter, then the 60 watt that's delivering it isn't gonna be ideal. It will charge it if you have it, the lid closed or something but I would not run that for an extended period of time, you know, while you're running heavy applications. So just keep that in mind. 87 watts is, means 87 watts. 60 watts is not going to be enough to keep that thing running, you know, strong. But in any case, it's pretty darn cool, and it works. So let's go ahead and look at the other situation. All right, so here's the opposite scenario. Now we've got an older style laptop that needs a MagSafe 2 connector, and we've got our new style power adapters that come from Apple with a USB-C connector on it. So how are we going to make that work? Well, let me show you. And what we've got here is a cable that has USB-C on one end and MagSafe 2 on the other end. So now we're going to plug our USB-C end into our Apple charger and we'll plug this into the laptop. So let me get that set up and I'll show you how it works. So now I've got both the 61 watt and 87 watt styles of the USB-C chargers that come with the newer style MacBook Pros. And here's this cable. And we're just going to plug it in. In this case, it's going to work exactly how it's expected to. So you're going to have an amber light here when it's charging, a green light there when it's fully charged. So let me go ahead and open this up and we'll look at those power settings again and make sure that it's identifying it correctly. All right, so here's the MacBook Air all powered up, running off the charger right there, and using this USB-C cable. And if we go into, again, about, about this Mac, system report, power, and scroll down to the bottom, you can see it is connected. Now in this case, it's showing the wattage of 85. Now, I've done this with both the 87 watt and the 61 watt, and they both said the same thing. So I don't think this cable is as smart as, the, as this adapter is, as far as knowing what wattage it's, it's putting out, because there's simply no way that it's going to be putting out 85 watts out of a 61 watt adapter. And to double check that, I took this guy here, just an anchor um, you know, cell phone charger, tablet charger, and it puts out, I think, 45 watts, and it was showing the same thing of 85 watts. So in this case, you want to make sure that you are using the right power adapter or a strong enough power adapter for the laptop that you're charging, and, uh, and just be careful with that. But again, if you need a refresher on how to figure all that out, how many watts you're going to need, then watch that video I've got linked down below. Now they make this solution in a couple different varieties. They've got cables just like this one that go from USB-C to MagSafe 1, USB-C to MagSafe 2, and a lot of times, like on Amazon, they'll call it a T-tip or an L-tip. 
based on you know what it looks like this is the the t-tip and then oh, this is a magsafe 2 t-tip and then like this guy here is the l-tip just based on the shape of the connector so they have those and then they have another one that's just simply like about yay big and it plugs right into the magsafe connector and then it takes any USB-C connector. So if you have a USB-C to USB-C cable for your cell phone or for your tablet, as long as it's rated for enough watts, then that thing will work. Now most of these and the little tips that I was talking about, they are rated for up to 100 watts. Now hopefully none of your MacBooks are actually taking, you know, none of your old style MacBooks are, are requiring 100 watts, but at least you know that they should be rated for that much. All right, so so far I've showed you how to charge a new Mac, new style MacBook with an old style charger and how to st charge an old style MacBook with a new style charger. I've also shown you how to stumble over your own words. That's bonus. But I've got two more bonus scenarios for you. Now the first bonus scenario is you don't even need a MacBook charger at all for these, for these solutions because the beautiful thing about power delivery is you don't need a charger that's specific to any brand, you can use any kind of charger, including a power supply like this. This is the Blue Eddy EB3A, and it's got a 100 watt output on its USB-C. So we can plug this in right to the front there, turn it on, then turn on the DC output, and you'll see it'll even start telling you how many watts it's putting out and you can see, you might be able to see the amber light on here showing that it's starting to charge. And this could work, depending on the cable that you have, for the old style laptops using this type of cable. This will definitely work for the new style laptops, just USB-C to USB-C. And if you get that other type of uh, adapter that I was talking about that uses a USB-C cable, then you could just have one cable, one adapter, and then you're good for just about any type of laptop. And you don't have to get this big. They're, they make power banks, you know, you've seen them before, about yay big. And just look at the power delivery output on them. Some of them will go up to only 30 watts, some will go up to 45 watts, and there's some that go up to 100 watts that's still no bigger than your average, you know, power bank. So I'll put a link to some of those down in the description below so you can see what kind of options are out there. And these type of devices are pretty nifty because if we look at the output, it tells you that's putting out, in this case, only 12 watts. That's because this laptop was just about fully charged and it's just kind of keeping it, keeping it topped off. But if we go ahead and open the screen up, then you can see that number starts to jump up. It's now up over 20 watts. So it's kind of neat to see, you know, what your input is and what your output is. In this case, I don't have this even plugged in, so it's zero watt input. But you can have plug this, plug this into the wall, plug it into your car, plug it into some solar panels. So if you're going camping with a MacBook, this is definitely the way to go. Keep your darn chargers at home. All right, and the last scenario I'm going to talk about is if you're lucky enough to have one of the Thunderbolt displays or the Apple Cinema displays. And if you have one of those, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, look them up. They were beautiful monitors that Apple made. Um, back in the 2000, you know, early 2000s, and each of them had one of these dudes hanging off of it, so that when you brought your laptop to the monitor, you plug this in, you plug in the DisplayPort cable, and you're fully docked. Now, if you've got one of those monitors, and it's got this hanging off the back of it, the first problem was that was no good once you upgraded to a laptop that meant needed a MagSafe 2 adapter. Well, that's why they made this thing, and this is an Apple product that just magnets right on your L-tip to give you a MagSafe 2. So now I can take my old MagSafe 1, plug it into my MagSafe 2 MacBook. Again, this cable is, is permanently attached to my monitor, in that case, the Apple display or the Thunderbolt display. So the next step is, well, what happens if we get a new USB-C monitor or a new, new USB-C MacBook and we've got this old cable sticking on our monitor, and that is the exact reason why 
one of these is the perfect solution for that. So now you can still use your beautiful Thunderbolt display and still charge up your laptop, your brand new laptop, using the built-in cables. So I hope that gave you a bunch of ideas on how to keep your laptops nice and fully fed. If you uh, got some good information out of this, of course, I appreciate that like. If you want to see more stuff like this, then stay tuned and hit that subscribe button. And thanks as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.